Hello again, cookery fans. Now, I am here once more in uh, Australian scrubland. This is part of the, uh, again, part of the Mount Crawford forest system. And I'm on one of my morning hikes. And as such, I thought I'd bring three cookeries to review before resuming my hike. Actually, the review will be for this one. It is a cookery that someone had bought in uh, Kathmandu, and he did not buy it from one of the um, more renowned cookery houses. As you know, I'd bought most of my cookeries from Sanjay Lama's cookery blades factory in Thamil and these are two examples of what I've been using very often my service number two or known as the uh, also known as the jungle cookery and this big beast of a great panawal now I'm doing this review for someone else and he doesn't quite remember the uh, the place he bought this from but I can tell you that it's not one of the major cookery houses that you are probably familiar with. And by that I'm talking about Sanjay's Cookery Blades, or Ex Gurkha Cookery House, or GK and Company, uh, Cookery House International, or KHHI, or perhaps even um, uh, Cookery Palace. Now some of these uh, makers, all of them in fact, have a presence on the internet. Um, he bought this as a tourist. Now this is, according to him, it was marketed to him as the um, AEOF uh, cookery. Or um, to those of you in the know, Ex Gurkha Cookery House and I believe uh, Cookery House International um, market a version of that cookery. It's uh, the Afghan um, Operation Enduring Freedom model. Now, the literature says, at least in those cookery houses, the literature says that the uh, Afghan Operation Enduring Freedom cookery was a collaboration between the Gurkha regiments serving in Afghanistan and the major cookery houses in order to build a cookery that is more uh, capable of dealing with um, combat and tactical conditions in Afghanistan. Now is it a good cookery? Now, I do not have the um, Ex Gurkha Cookery House or the Cookery House International or the uh, GK and Company um, versions of the AEOF, but I have this one. It's unmarked, so I'm not sure about its provenance. I can tell you though that Having seen photos on the internet of the other cookery houses' offerings, this is probably not one of the, um, well, better made ones in terms of its looks. The uh, ex Gurkha cookery house version of this blade, for example, has a much darker rosewood handle and a better polished wood, whereas this one, as you can see, well, the wood polish is a bit rough. And leaves a little bit more to be desired. I'll place it under the shade so you can see it. Uh, I will tell you though that these rivets are flush fit into the handle, so I'd, there is no need to um, um, do any more work with that. It's a full tang blade, which means, unlike the the standard. Um, service number one or service number two that the Gurkhas have been issued with, with for, for years. Um, this one has a very strong full tang blade, which is one of the reasons why I brought my um, Great Panawal, because that one, while it's not a military cookery, also has a full tang. Um, and just like the Great Panawal, this beast has a has uh, two fullers or two chiras. Here, have a look. Um, this is 
one chira and this is the other one. It's got a convex edge, which means um, it does not have the, the kind of inward curving um, structure that you find in, in the edges of many other knives. So this one has a single convex edge. My f friend said it came out of the box um, already very sharp. And I agree, because I haven't sharpened this since getting it from him, and if that's true, then it really is very sharp. My only uh, problem with it, though, is that it's very, very heavy. It's, it's not as heavy as the Great Panawal. Now, this, this one, really, this is more than two and a half pounds in weight. In contrast, this one... The jungle cookery that Gurkhas carry in the field. This is um, about a pound and, uh, well, 18 ounces or so. This one is uh, in between these two weights. Um, so it's, it's really quite heavy. And um, while I would not have any problems using this as a chopping tool in a forest like this, uh, Tactical deployment, however, might be a bit of an issue because it really is quite heavy. And unlike my jungle service number two, which is light enough to swing as a fighting knife, this one is, well, it takes a lot of getting used to. On the other hand, though, if you happen to land a blow on an enemy with a blade this heavy, there will be significant consequences. I can tell you that. Another thing I don't like about it is the fact that the uh, the wood handle isn't very comfortable. It's, well as you can see, it's got a what's called a gripper handle and that it's got finger grooves. Well, my hand is not big and most other Gurkhas I would assume, most Gurkhas, not one of them, sorry, most Gurkhas I would assume small people, um, statue-wise, would probably have a problem working a handle like this with small hands. And my hands are medium-sized, and as you can see, I couldn't put them all in the... If I did that, put all my fingers in the grooves, it would be distinctly uncomfortable. So I end up doing this, where I put two fingers in this groove, my index finger there and my little finger here. Um, if I were right-handed this thumb um, cutout would be pretty good for my right thumb but I'm left-handed so it really doesn't matter much to me. Well you, yeah, I can get used to this and, and this uh, bit here is pretty good for keeping your finger away from the sharp edge of the blade when you use this for stabbing or thrusting. Um, unlike your traditional kukri, which has a um, a kada, a kauda, sorry, cut out, this one does not. Um, by and large, though, it's it's the grip isn't as comfortable, and the the, the squarish edges here this needs a bit more rounding because it tends to cut into the palm of my hand making it, um, well, if I were to keep using this for a longer time than a few minutes, then it would eventually become very, very uncomfortable. In contrast, despite the fact that my great panel is very heavy, the, the, the dark rosewood handle is very comfortable. So there you go. And in any event, it is not a bad cookery. The blade is made of the same um, truck spring steel as all the others. Most other cookeries, or all other cookeries made in Nepal. It's very similar to my service number two in that the blade is um, not polished, which means that it is meant really for rough work. It's not a display piece. And given what I've seen so far, I think this will do very well for rough work.
particularly if you're in a place like this. Now, um, it's got an 11 inch long blade from this point to that. It's, it's got an 11 inch long blade. My service number two is about 10 inches long. This is 10 inches long. My great panel is 10 and a half. My polished service number one, which I left back home, is a little more than 10 inches and a half long. It's almost 11. And the um, World War II historic cookery that I'd recently bought from Sanjay, cookery, cookery blades, that one has an 11 inch blade as well and a more um, sharply angled forward edge. It also has a thicker, this cookery has a heavier forward end, so you can tell that it's meant for chopping and uh, cutting. And if you notice the tip, put the tip there, the tip kind of flares forward a little. It's not a smooth um, back rake. Let me show you here. This bit kind of does a little bit of forward rake. My other cookeries do not have that feature. I don't know why it's there, but it's what makes this um, AEOF or Afghan Enduring Freedom cookery unique. It comes with the same Karda and Chakmak, and um, the Karda and Chakmak have longer than the usual handles, which makes them easier to to hold if you use them. And the scabbard too is different from your standard cookery scabbard. Now, my service number two scabbard, as you can see, is made of black buffalo leather with a brass pointy tip. And I've been told that um, Gurkhas who've used this in the field have often when going into combat or combat training, have often had to find green cloth material or camouflage cloth material to wrap their scabbard around with so that it would uh, be less conspicuous and would blend more into their uniforms. Um, apparently, Sanjay Lama's cookery blades manufactures a, a jungle cookery or a service number two in a khaki format. According to his website, um, some Afghan um, deployed Gurkhas asked him to make a cookery that would be more like their uniforms in color. So he made this one similar to this in color. And he also provided a buffalo, a white buffalo horn handle instead of the usual black. And, with a subdued approach to things, and I think that's the reason why the uh, AEOF scabbard is in this color scheme. It is meant to uh, adapt to the, the um, environment of Afghanistan and blend in more readily with the British Army standard uniform in the arid or semi-arid region of Afghanistan. It also does not have the, um, the usual brass tip. Instead, it has this belt loop. Um, and although, unlike the better quality cookeries of Sanjay's um, cookery blades, this is not entirely made of white buffalo leather, as you can see. Part of it is made of a, of a synthetic, almost linoleum-like leather material. I have never tested this yet, so I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I can tell you it's, 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 um, well, it's not entirely of the same material, the sheath or scabbard cover. Um, it also has a um, a lanyard ring here in the back, back of the pommel, and the fact that it's full tang, well, it makes this a pretty good uh, cookery, um, like I said, for general purpose use. I wouldn't, 
it wouldn't be my first choice in combat. I would probably prefer this, as it's lighter, easier to wield, faster. But anyway, that's the AEOF Kukri. Now, I don't have in my possession the ex Gurkha Kukri House version of this blade or the or um, any other version from all the other Kukri houses. I can tell you though that it's um, you know for the, the the purposes that you would use these things um, for I think that would be a, a fairly good blade if you can um, reshape the handle a little bit I would advise my friend when I give this back to him to get some fine sandpaper and try to reshape this grip a little more so it'll be more comfortable in the hand and probably if, if it, there's a way of smoothening this out some there's these finger rubes he, he's got bigger hands than I do but I really doubt if he can handle this put all of his fingers in these grooves and still be able to deploy this comfortably um, just like my great Panawal, it has plenty of um, forward weight. And um, yeah, it's not bad. It's, it's a pretty good stiff blade. It's got the same thickness as my great Panawal blade, three eighths of an inch or thereabouts. And it's definitely, definitely, um, well, it definitely means business. All right. However, if you do need a, um, a cookery and you happen to be in Nepal, you know, my advice is go for the uh, better known um, cookery houses. In fact, my first recommendation would be Sanjay Lama's uh, cookery blades. And then all the others, they're not bad. If you can afford a little more, uh, Himalayan imports and uh, Torah blades are also um, renowned quality wise I've never handled their blade so I've, I've got that from hearsay um, but you know as for my friend well he bought it cheap so I suppose he uh, got what he paid for but even so it can stand up to whatever you would subject a cookery to you know it can definitely do the hard yards it's, it just does not look as good um, as these. Alright, so that's my review for today. Thank you for listening and I will continue to be making these videos for as long as there are those of you out there who um, love these blades. And whatever you do, whatever, if ever you buy a cookery, whether in Kathmandu, in person or over the internet, well, you will be helping um, people over there with, uh, well, with their survival. And you will be um, contributing something to uh, the culture of Nepal, where these blades really come from. I mean, they, they own these blades. This is, we, we can copy them. We've had, we've got companies in the West that copy these blades and, uh, probably make them better in some ways but just like what bagpipes are to the Scots or what the katana is to the Japanese this these are Nepalese we have we have to respect that ownership so thank you everyone and uh, well all the best bye